and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, I a, a poor, poor miserable, miserable sinner, sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, you gave your Son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning again to those of you who are in the building, who I got to say hi to just before we went live with the broadcast. And good morning to those who are watching from home, and welcome to, uh, to our worship service this morning. I hope everybody is able to watch it. I did see a comment flash across my screen that someone was having trouble uh, getting uh, the, the video, uh, but that I think that appears to me maybe on just that one person's end, because I think we are transmitting. It says we have 15 viewers now. Um, uh, if, if there are continuing problems, maybe try to message. Uh, if you comment on the, on the video, then it flashes on my screen just real quick that there was a comment. It doesn't tell me who said it, um, but I can try, can try to rectify it if I can, like maybe during the readings or something. But, uh, but I do want to, uh, uh, in addition to welcoming everybody, uh, to, be here, make a few announcements, uh, and we actually have quite a few so that we printed them out. Uh, we have an OSLC messenger for the first time in six months, uh, and, and this is available for those who are at home as well. Uh, we did a, a different format where it's on a single page like this, front and back. This makes it easier for people who are at home or you yourselves when you go home. Uh, if you misplace your copy, uh, you can go to the same bulletins folder online. Uh, the links are fr on the Facebook page, the church homepage, and in the weekly email. And uh, you can uh, print this out yourself on standard paper or maybe just view it on your tablet or your phone. Uh, you might have to zoom in uh, to read it on your phone. But, uh, but this has the announcements for this week and where it says new this week, everything is new this week. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> so it's, it's a brand new uh, for this week and then some of these things will go on uh, under in case you missed this like we did for some ongoing announcements and that sort of thing uh, But uh, we'll see how this format serves us. So This helps I don't have to explain everything in great detail But I am going to go through everything just real quick and hit the headlines so that you know what all is on here uh, So in addition to describing the messenger we do have COVID regulations for the groups that meet and uh, and so uh, details there uh, as groups are coming back into the building. Uh, we do have a congregational meeting coming up first Sunday of November, details there. Uh, we do thank you for s continuing to sign up for in-person worship. Um, it, uh, it might be kind of cumbersome to uh, try to do it each time that you're coming, uh, but we do appreciate it because then that makes sure that we know that we have the capacity, especially here at the 11 o'clock service. Uh, we are seating everybody on this side of the congregation uh, because we have our musician over here on this side of, of the congregation. And uh, so the capacity is reduced a little bit until we reach capacity, and then we don't need the additional musician. Then we would have enough singers at this service uh, to, uh, to carry it. That's, uh, that's the idea. Then uh, the weekly email uh, does, does go out. If you're not getting that, check your spam folder if you thought you had signed up for it. Um, uh, but if you're not getting it, then do send me an email, and I'll add you to the list. The outdoor movie night is tonight. It looks like we're going to have some great weather for that. Might be just a little chilly, so wear some layers and bring a blanket or um, lawn chairs to sit out on the front lawn here. And we have the giant inflatable screen. Uh, it'll be getting dark at six. So it should be dark enough to start the movie, and so I won't stay too late on a school night since uh, uh, some some kids are going in person. I think uh, tomorrow, as uh, some of the school districts are going uh, uh, like a Monday, Tuesday, and a Thursday, Friday, dividing the kids up. Then, uh, so that's tonight at 6. Before that, this afternoon at 4 o'clock is when the high school youth group, and I say high school, it's actually we go from junior high all the way through high school and into college age. So if you're a young adult, you're welcome to join us for that as well. And they have a big mystery that they've been uh, talking about for the past uh, few months, I think all, uh, uh, all through the summer, that will finally be revealed this afternoon as they uh, kick off uh, this new school year. 
uh, with that mystery revealed. Friendship Circle is meeting tomorrow in person. So they'll be here in the social hall. Uh, there are details there. And the Mums Sale, uh, they actually uh, sold out their entire supply. So thanks for, uh, for everybody supporting that way. And Donna will contact you about the pickup times. Early Sunrisers will be meeting. Uh, we have Trunk and Treat coming up at the end of this month. And we'll have the cars parked like we always do, but we'll probably have like an extra space in between each car. So that, but we want as many trunks as we can. So, uh, so contact Raquel about uh, if you can participate by decorating a trunk. Uh, Bible studies are meeting Wednesdays and Thursdays, and the preschool is in session. We are even at uh, capacity for the four-year-old class. It's a little bit smaller. We did 12 instead of the normal 16 capacity, but there is room in the three-year-old class. Uh, that class is quite small. Um, so again, you can read over uh, all these announcements on your own uh, to get the details. And there's even a calendar. There is one uh, little misprint on the calendar. The choir is meeting this Wednesday, and it says 7 o'clock p.m., but that should say 7.30 p.m., and it's just a one-half-hour uh, rehearsal uh, because that's part of the COVID recommendations that come from the Department of Health and CDC and that sort of thing, too. So to limit that to 30 minutes, but they'll be wearing masks. That'll be at 7.30 on Wednesday. Other things that are going on this week as well, so uh, do look at that calendar. So after that lengthy uh, uh, bit of announcements, we are ready to continue our service with the readings from Holy Scripture as we turn our attention to God's Word. In the Old Testament reading appointed for the 18th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 5. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and brewed and hewed a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O, habit, o inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting, and he looked for justice but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will 
I'll give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the Epistle reading is from St. Paul's Epistle to the Philippians, the third chapter. If anyone else thinks they have reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. In order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory be to you, o Lord. For Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard, and put a fence around it, and dug a wine press in it, and built a tower, and leased it to tenants, and went away into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. 
And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When, therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush them. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for, for us men and for our salvation came down, down from heaven, from heaven and, was and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, Mary and, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. And he suffered and was buried. And, and the third day he rose again, again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Centered on God's word and sacraments in Christ, we, we share, share his truth and his love, love among, among ourselves and with, with the world. world. You may be seated. And I'd like to take this time to speak especially to the kids and might have some watching. And uh, uh, the, the grown-ups actually enjoyed this uh, children's sermon quite a lot uh, in, the, uh, in the 930 service. Let me just uh, get zoomed in right there because I do need to be able to uh, to show you if you're watching at home if you're uh, uh, sitting here in the sanctuary what is what is this that I have what does this look like what do we have deck of cards uh, who knows how many cards there are in a deck 52 so it's quite a lot and I actually wasn't sure if there was a, a joker in here uh, before it doesn't I don't think I see a joker um, and so, the 52 cards, what, what colors do we have of cards? Some cards are red, some cards are black. Of the red cards, we've got two suits, right? There's hearts, which are always red, right? We always think of hearts as being red, and then uh, and diamonds. This is the other red suit. Black cards, and there's clubs, and uh, uh, some, some people think that the club looks like a little puppy's foot. So some, somebody might say that's the three of puppy feet. That, that was in our house growing up. Uh, and then the other one is the spade. That's pointy like a shovel. That's a spade. So 
And then not only that, there's numbers on cards, right? So there's all sorts of different numbers. There's the ace for number one, um, and then numbers two all the way up through ten, and then there's the face cards. There's kings, there's queens, there's jacks. So there's all sorts of different cards. And if I shuffle these up so that I don't even know what's in these, and now I'm going to cut the deck so I have no idea what card this is. If I take this card, I haven't looked at it yet, who thinks that this is a black card? You think it's a spade or a club? Who thinks it maybe is a black card? I have one hand in the back for black. So does that mean the rest of you think that it's red? Who thinks it's red? All right, quite a few think it's red. What are you basing that on? All right, so who, who thinks you have no idea what the card is? Really, you have a 50-50 chance of getting it right, right? That means half, if, if half said red and half said black, it's going to be one of those. So half of you would be right. But more, more chose red uh, here uh, in the church. So if it's red, then more than half of you will be right. Uh, so, uh, so let's focus on those who said red. If you think it's red, then you think is, uh, who thinks it's hearts? Anybody think it's hearts? A couple? Anybody think it's diamonds? A few more. That, that's about 50-50. If it's black, then you're all wrong. Uh, <laughs> except for those of you who said uh, uh, just a, a small handful said black. Um, should I look? Uh, so, so right now, I don't even know. Uh, you guys don't know for sure if you're right. Who does know? Who do you think does know? God knows, right? God knows what this is. He, you know what? He even knew what it was before I drew it. Uh, that's how much he knows. God knows everything. He knows the future as well as the past. And he knows everything in the present. So God knows everything. So God already knows what this is. I don't know. Nobody really knows. Uh, we might be right. We might be wrong. Uh, do you want to guess if it's a number or a face card? Who thinks it has a face on it? Anybody thinks it has a face on it? You know better than to guess that, right? The, 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 the grown-ups know. There's a lot more number cards. So who thinks it has a number? All right, so start calling out numbers. What, what number do you think it is? I hear a five. I hear a four. Eight? Eight in the back? All right, let's see. Seven. You guys ready? I hear a seven. Somebody's going for lucky seven. Somebody's going for two. We didn't say ace. What if it's an ace? I'm going to look. Ooh. All right. That's pretty good. All right. So, some of you are right. This is a seven of clubs. So seven of clubs. So very good if you said seven. Very good if you said a black card. Very good if you said clubs. Some of you are wrong. Uh, oh, because a lot of you said red cards, right? So all you red card people are wrong. But is that, is that a problem? Is that okay? No, uh, of course that's okay, right? Because... Because how would you possibly know? You can't know. But God does know. And so when it comes to the future, when it comes to what lies ahead of us, we don't know what the future holds. There's all sorts of things that we don't know. We can make some guesses, and sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. But the one who does know is God, and that's what we want to remember, is that God always knows what's going on, and He'll lead us through whatever we need Him to lead us through. And He is with us wherever we go. And so that's good news. And in fact, He... Uh, he knew that we were going to need a Savior, and he sent us Jesus to be our Savior. And he, he gave us Jesus so that we uh, could live forever with him. And so God knows what, what is at the end of our life. And so for you kids, if, if you're young and you don't even know what you're going to be when you grow up, where you're going to live, who you're going to marry, things that you might not even be thinking about right now, God knows it, and he will lead you through all of it. And so we can thank him for that. Let's fold our hands and we'll say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you do know the future, and when we make our guesses, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong, but you know it all. And so no matter what happens in the future, we pray that you would lead us, be with us, uh, help us to know for sure, and, and, and take comfort in knowing that you will always be with us through the ups and downs, no matter what happens. We pray this all in Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. All right, thank you very much, and we'll continue now with the hymn of the day, what is the world to me? It's number 477 on the insert. <laughs>
content with this and peace be unto you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's sermon is the epistle reading appointed for this 18th Sunday after Pentecost from Philippians chapter 3, especially these verses where St. Paul writes, If anyone else thinks they have reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. And did I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord? For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. This is the text. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. It is an annual fall tradition, apple picking. Some minor adjustments might have to be made in 2020, but this is an outdoor activity in wide open spaces, so it should be fine. Going to the orchard is a multi-sensory delight. Sights, sounds, tastes, smells. Listen to the crunch of an apple fresh from the tree as you enjoy the crisp autumn air and beautiful colored leaves of the surrounding countryside. The aroma of cider and hot, just-baked donuts. Many people have their favorite apple varieties. I'm partial to Empire apples bred right here in New York. Other people love them all. Still others know precisely which variety they want for their pies or cakes or applesauce or whatever plans they have for the bushels of produce they'll pick this year. So imagine getting all ready to head out to the orchard, bag in hand, looking forward to some delicious apples, and all you find are crab apples. You think, this can't be right. So you pick one and take a tentative bite, and your taste buds are assaulted with such bitter acidity that you immediately spit it out on the ground. This is the orchard described in today's Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 5, except that it's a vineyard. And the Lord went looking for grapes and found only wild grapes which is a little absurd because the vineyard had been planted with choice vines. You don't get wild grapes from cultivated grapevines, and you don't get crab apples from the trees of an apple orchard. But that's exactly the point, don't you see? It is absurd that after everything the Lord has done for his people, that they would act this way. Instead of eternal gratitude and fervent devotion to God's commandments, there is violence and bloodshed. Jesus takes this same imagery of the vineyard and gives it a twist. I don't know, maybe you think you can't blame grapevines for passively producing whatever is in their DNA to produce. So now it's the tenants. It's the tenants who are 
absurdly withholding the owner's share of the crop from him, even killing his servants. And yet he preposterously continues to send servants who they continue to kill until finally they kill the son and heir, hoping to take the whole vineyard for themselves. Then it says, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. You think? Regular bunch of Sherlock Holmes, these guys. And yet their reasoning says, we don't like Jesus because he says we're bad people. They say this as they're plotting his arrest and ultimately his unjust death. But give them some credit. We're worse than they are because of all the times that we don't perceive that God's law is talking about us. We hear all this talk about failing to produce good fruit. Well, that's other people. They can be so dense. And it's amazing how much mileage we can get out of one good deed. We can milk that for days, feel good about ourselves, completely overlooking our shortcomings, convinced that we're better than average. Or we think that we can purchase God's favor for a low, low price. One hour on a Sunday, that's all it takes, and we're good for a whole week, or maybe more. No need to spend time in prayer or reading God's word on a weekday. Certainly no need to think about making daily decisions from a biblical worldview. After all that God has done for us to make us his children, the way we act is as absurd as getting crab apples from the orchard. The Lord looks for love among us and finds rumors and gossip instead. He looks for compassion and finds accusations and false assumptions about motivations. Where there should be forgiveness, there is bitterness and resentment. He gives and gives to us, and we so seldom pause to say thank you, usually wondering instead why we don't have more. with all of this against us. If we are going to be made right with God, it's going to take a lot more than the means we have at our disposal. What do we think we are going to do? The Apostle Paul grew up with his list, circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. So in part, he's relying on his heritage. When it comes to his own standards, he judges himself righteous by invented standards. They weren't from God. Human beings had made these up. As to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless, at least outwardly, a civic righteousness. Like Paul, we mistakenly pin our confidence on the wrong things. Who our ancestors were, if our parents were Christian, or our grandparents were Lutheran, or even being a lifelong American. Also, like Paul, we judge ourselves by our own standards, proudly declaring ourselves spiritual but not religious, looking down on others who are judgmental, without even noticing the irony of how judgmental we're being by doing so. Some of the most pharisaical behavior comes from people taking pride in not being like Pharisees. All of this amounts to an attempt to be righteous in God's sight by our own efforts, which will get us nowhere. So the Apostle Paul writes, But 
whatever gain I had, I counted it as loss for the sake of Christ. It all has an appearance of value, but it's really worthless, like a fistful of expired coupons or pocketfuls of foreign currency or play money. He says, indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Worse than worthless, our efforts at justifying ourselves are potentially dangerous as they lead us in the wrong direction. Paul calls them rubbish. The word is really stronger than that. The King James Bible translates this word as dung to give you an idea. There are other possible translations, and some commentaries even accuse the apostle of using inappropriate language. I wouldn't go that far, but I do think that he's going for as much shock value as he can get from the vernacular. He's saying it's all a load of garbage. At the very least, our attempts at righteousness are a bunch of rotting fruit of bitter wild grapes and sour crab apples. The smell, the taste are vile and offensive. This is why we need a Savior. Stop thinking you can do it on your own. Paul says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Jesus is the one who has taken hold of us to rescue us from the filthy sewage of our sin. He is the son of the vineyard owner who was thrown out and killed, but proved stronger than death. And because of the power of his resurrection, we can press on to our final goal, which is our own resurrection. Life restored from death, no matter what happens, as God graciously restores all things. You go back to the beginning in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. It was bad fruit in the Garden of Eden that plunged our world into death. But read to the end. And in Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it says that when the Lord restores paradise, the tree of life will bear fruit continuously. And so if we are to produce good fruit in this life, we must be connected to the source of life. As Jesus says in John chapter 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. And we remain in him by the fruit of the vine that we receive in Holy Communion, which he gives to us as his blood shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins centered on God's word and sacraments in Christ is how we share his truth and his love among ourselves and with the world. Nothing else matters. It's all rubbish or worse compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus our Lord. By his grace may we be found in him bringing forth the fruit of good works to his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. amen. We continue now with the gathering of our offerings here in the sanctuary, or if you're at home, a virtual gathering of the offerings uh, as you... Uh,
write out your check maybe this time or address the envelope or set up uh, automatic giving from your checking account if you've not, not done that as we support the work of the Lord here in this place.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was cast out of the vineyard of Jerusalem, was killed outside of the city by the hands of sinful men, who took our sin upon himself to make atonement, to bring forgiveness where we could not bring restitution, where our own good works fail to make up for our sin. Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayers for the sake of Jesus who has taken away our sin, has made us your children, has clothed us with his righteousness in holy baptism. We pray that you would move within us by your Holy Spirit, connected to Jesus our Savior as the true vine and source of life, that we would bring forth the fruit of good works that help our neighbor in the world around us. Lord, when we fail, when we bring harm instead of good, when we fail to do the good things that we should do, Lord, assure us that we have not ceased to be your children, but give us the ability to live out the salvation that you have bestowed upon us, bringing glory to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our continuing prayers during this pandemic, and especially as the illness has now affected President Trump and the First Lady as they have been diagnosed with COVID. We pray that you would watch over them and all who have been infected. We pray for healing uh, from this dread disease for all who have been touched by it, for those who uh, are still affected in other ways. We pray for your continued uh, protection. We pray for the other candidate, former Vice President Joe Biden and his wife Jill, and for all who uh, have to be out and among other people, uh, that all would take necessary precautions to uh, to remain as safe as possible. And if, in spite of all that we do, uh, we pray that you would bring healing and protection uh, within our country. Give us the patience to endure for as long as we must. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for those who are sick or hospitalized for other reasons, Hear our prayers. We pray for Alice Stewart. Continued prayers for her for strength during her ongoing illness. For Amos Showholm's daughter Sigrid Vaughn, diagnosed with breast cancer. We thank you for the favorable prognosis that she has received, but still commend her to your care for complete healing. Additionally, we pray for friends of Donna Saxton, for Sally Blair, Michelle Covert, who is in kidney failure and for Michelle's daughter, Sarah Covert, possibly suffering from ovarian cancer, and for others whom we name before you now in our hearts. Lord, we commend them to your care and pray that you would bring health and healing in accordance with your will and in your timing. Give us patience to endure for as long as we must and strength we pray for the healing that you desire for us in this life, even as we all look forward to the perfect and complete healing that awaits us in the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for that perfect and complete healing, the victory over pain and suffering, victory over death and the grave itself that Christ Jesus has won for us by his death and resurrection, we give you thanks and praise. We pray that it will comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Especially, we pray for Diane Lohr's former neighbors, the Seifermans, at the death of their daughter, Lauren, at the age of just 31. Also, we pray for Richard Velo and his family at the death of his grandfather, Edward Steinitz, at the great age of 97. And Lord, when, whenever anyone is taken from us, whether young or old. We always feel the loss, and we feel that it's not right. Lord, we thank you that you felt that first. You knew that 
death was not what you planned for your children, and so you planned for a Savior who would take our sin upon himself and give us everlasting life through the forgiveness of our sins. And so although we grieve and are sad at the separation, we grieve in the hope of knowing that we will see our loved ones again who have gone before us in this faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless our mission of the month now for October as we pray for the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. We thank you for the many decades of service that uh, these women have given in the different mission projects, both at home and abroad, that they have funded. What began as collecting only spare change, the small coins that were left over, lest it be perceived that they were taking away from, uh, from other established mission projects, but by placing this into your hands, you have multiplied it to literally millions of dollars uh, gathered from across the country to fund these mission projects, to bring help to people, to share the gospel of salvation in Christ Jesus. We pray that you would continue to bless their leaders, bless all who benefit from this ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And bless those celebrating their birthdays this week. We pray for Elaine, Amel, Sally, and George. Thank you for another year of life that you've granted them by your grace. Praying that you would be with them and all of us through all the days of all the passing years. That we would bring forth the fruit of repentance and good works. Showing love to our neighbors and our devotion to you. And when we inevitably fall short, we thank you that you will pick us up, dust us off, set us on the right path. And our eternal life is assured because Christ Jesus has died for us and has risen again to lead the way into everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Thanks be to God. God.